Hello everyone, welcome to Rockshire Gaming. My name is Eric. Today we're going to be potentially starting coverage, at least looking at day one coverage of a new game from uh, Simon. Come on, how are you? Say it. I've been told many different things. Um, but we're going to take a look at their newest Kickstarter that uh, started uh, this afternoon that ironically for this channel has nothing to do with zombies or superheroes. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, change our camera views here and take a look at their newest uh, Kickstarter campaign, Mordred. That's right, we're going to go over all the day one unlocks and other information for Mordred. Again, I hope I'm saying that right. Someone let me know in the comments if I'm completely saying that wrong. And if you're down there in the comments, also go ahead, like this video, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Um, would really help us out here. Uh, we are almost at this point up to 200 subscribers. Chugging along there a little bit, but any little bit helps. So if you like this coverage, uh, we've done it before with Marvel United Multiverse, and we've done it with um, White Death. And again, uh, you know, I, I'm enjoying the Simon games I do have, so that's why I kind of like to kind of go over these campaigns. Plus, it's kind of fun just to go. Um, through the day by day, a lot of campaigns that I follow when I still go ahead and pledge to um, don't necessarily have all the constant unlocks that a Simon campaign does. So it gets really fun and um, near interactive to um, kind of do these videos and go through all this uh, the information here. So I like doing it, and you know I've gotten a lot of good response from it in the past. So um, yeah, uh, we'll shut up with that and go into. This. So we are on day one, 13 days to go for um, uh, Mordred on day one. They have already gotten 2,269 backers with $184,508 raised. Now this is, in my mind, a smaller campaign. We go into the stretch goals here in a minute. We will, or in a few minutes, um, we will kind of see that um, there's nothing really to compare this to. In the other videos, if you have watched um, the comparison videos that I have done in the past, um, not even comparison videos, like the, the coverage videos on other CMON campaigns, um, I usually, because they're, you know, the third season campaigns for other um, uh, for those games, I usually compare them to their previous campaigns or their um, or the very similar campaigns to them. Uh, this game, we're not going to do that with because this is the game. Uh, there's no other uh, game to compare it to. Um, in the comments, if there is any other older Simon game that was like a, for lack of a better term, a one shot, something that doesn't have multiple seasons to it, that you would feel would be a fair comparison for me to look at, let me know again that in the comments. The only thing I can kind of compare this to um, that I'll just say right off the bat looking at my old notes is that uh, where they are at right now with funding for this campaign is under where Marvel United and Zombicide White Death both were on their day ones before a stretch goal was announced. Um, looking back on it, uh, Corsair, yeah, Corsair from Marvel United Multiverse, which was the first stretch goal, was at $240,000. And over at Zombicide White Death, the update packs, not even a character, but the update packs, which were the first technical stretch goal for that campaign, I believe we're at the 200000 mark. So, um, yeah, day one, and again, this is technically day, uh, the first half of day one. The campaign started at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm filming this. Right now it's 11.35. Had a lot of stuff going on this evening, but it's 11.35 p.m. as I'm recording this on um, July 12th, Eastern Time. So um, all times are going to be Eastern Time, by the way. Um, but yeah, this campaign started at 3 p.m. this afternoon and uh still have a lot more to go for day one but again uh for the last two major campaigns that cma did cash wise they haven't gotten up there not saying content wise they have it and it's really not fair to compare um you know th those costs and everything with that so again we're not going to be doing that during this uh series this time comparing it to all the previous campaigns we're just going to be looking at what this game has to offer and we're going to stop rambling and go ahead and do 
that. So we're gonna scroll down here to look at um, the game itself. So right off the bat here, we do have, we see the box right here with Mordred on it. Uh, we see two different boards. Now I didn't, I saw the postings, I saw the initial announcement for this game. I haven't really been able to look at some of the, I know there was some other videos where they talk about sculpting the um, figures and other stuff like that. I haven't, I didn't go through any of those main videos because I was kind of waiting for the Kickstarter itself to launch to kind of go through the Kickstarter page. Um, but anyway, so we have two different boards. We have cards here and dashboards for different factions. We have the cards here, like I said, for um, uh, the main, uh, I believe it's leaders and whatnot. And we'll kind of go through that here more in a second. Um, we're going to go and do some reading designed by Alexio Schneeberger with Andrea Cervicio, who uh, did work on Marvel United um, with amazing art by Adrian Smith and miniatures by Studio McVeigh. Mordred is a competitive game in which two to four players take control of legendary factions of Britannia in the search for of dominance and glory. Making use of their unique abilities, factions will attempt to gain the favor of Merlin Mordred and Morgana in a war that crosses over realms. They must mitigate the presence and influence of monstrous beasts that roam the land while managing the use of limited resources, including one so fickle as time. Only the rise of a new kingdom can stop the spreading chaos that creeps across the land. So that's a little bit of the, um, uh, not necessarily backstory. The backstory is in here. Um, but uh, that's a little bit of what you're going to be doing in the game for two to four players. It takes about 90 minutes or so to play through a game. And in order to save Camelot, you have to be 14 or older. Sorry. So uh, Mordred made a big mistake, a big or made a mistake, a big mistake in search of allies for his own march on Camelot. Free of his mother's meddling, he ventured into the Fey realm. He found plenty of factions eager to make war against Arthur and his knights, but moving large forces between worlds is difficult. Mordred found a spell, a godsend really, almost suspiciously so. It would meld a small region of the worlds together, but upon utterance, the spell did that and far, far worse. The two realms are merging into a vast region of chaos ruled by universal laws of both and none. And the one person who might fix this, Arthur, has gone missing. A product of the spell even Merlin doesn't know. But Mordred did not want to win by wizardry. That is not his way. Now Morgana, Merlin, and Mordred stand locked in a struggle to shepherd one faction's dominance to right Mordred's error and bring about uh, bring order out of chaos. So that's a little bit of the backstory. Um, Mordred did some stuff to... Uh, help him with winning Camelot and kind of screw things up. And now he's got to, now everyone's got to kind of fix it. Um, so you're going to take your side in a war between factions. So you're going to have uh, different factions, units, spells, combat cards uh, in the game, earn the favor of great leaders. So Mordred, Morgana and Merlin are going to be different leaders that are going to have different abilities. Uh, I believe going through the rule book, which is posted and it's, we'll see it farther down on the, uh, page here that um, I think there is like a basic side to the card and then a more advanced side to the card um, for them but um, but yeah you're, you're gonna get different abilities from the different uh, leaders on the board um, use time wisely plan your actions carefully actions cost time according to their impact so invest strategically to gain the upper hand by changing the turn order and flow of the games so it's gonna be Pretty interesting if you're going to be able to manipulate um, uh, the, the different turn order for yourself, uh, for yourself and the other people you're playing with. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to get multiple turns out of out of uh, uh, an ability or anything like that, but I'm sure we will find out soon. Beware of monstrous beasts. So there's some very scary looking harpy things there. Um, gather legendary knights. Uh, from the famous uh, higher famous knights of the round table to aid in your cause and prepare for the unavoidable chaos prepare for chaos to unleash across the lands unfolding a brand new play area with greater rewards and greater peril embrace the chaos seize opportunities and forge 
your path to victory. So this is going over what is in the pledge. The main pledge out right now is $110. There is no other pledge here, but it is a CMON game. So I'm warning everybody right now, they are probably, and usually when I do these kind of videos, if I do another video, it depends on how well this one does, but if I do another video in this series, uh, it'll probably be made Friday night and be posted late, late, late Friday going into Saturday. Uh, but it will, um, if I do that video, it'll be because some kind of expansion content or something like that came out. I usually try to save um, doing videos. I'm not doing a video every day on these campaigns. I usually try to do a video whenever a major expansion or significant uh, stretch goals or something like that is out. Um, so there's that. So right now uh, the Fae Pledge is going to have three leaders, Merlin, Mordred, and Morgana with their different uh, uh, miniatures. I don't know why I couldn't remember that word. Uh, their leader cards, again, I believe double-sided. They're each going to have 30 favor tokens and two care tokens. I don't know how to say that word. Cares are basically strongholds. Um, they have tokens for those uh, strongholds for the different characters, but we'll kind of take a look at that because they do change some stuff up later on. So we have our different factions. We have the high elves. Most of these parts of the pictures are going to look very much the same. I'm assuming that the combat cards and the spell cards are going to be what kind of gives the different factions their edge. But uh, for the high elves right here, we're going to have three mystics, a chief, and nine different warriors. Uh, we're going to have the dashboard, the march, muster, and magic uh, that are here and I'm realizing now that I'm pointing at stuff with my mouse pointer and it's not showing up on for you guys. So I apologize for that. But the March muster and magic uh, portions on here, I believe are the same for all three factions. Um, but you're going to have the combat cards, the spell cards, night color base, four action discs and a faction tracker right there. Our next group is going to be humans uh, with basically the same loadouts of three mystics, nine warriors, and one chief, five spell cards. So that's going to be that. So you're going to have high elves as green. You're going to have humans as this tan sand color. You're going to have hobyars, which I tried looking up what those are and couldn't really find much. Um, if you turn the R into an H, it brings up something else. But um, yeah, so you got hobyars. Um, they're, they almost look like little, uh, like humanoidish goblin or creatures. If you know what they are, please let me know. Uh, but again, same loadout with that. And they're going to be this blue color and the underground dwarves. Um, again, same loadout here of figures, um, with their colored bases, more of like a slate, uh, gray, um, blackish color here. So we're going to have also four knights that are introduced. We are going to have Sir Rem, uh, Reldrum. We're going to have Lady Elaine. We're going to have Sir Blackheart. And we're going to have Dame uh, Ritomart, if I'm saying all that correctly. All these, again, from Arthurian legend. Um and I can go into another, uh, if I do another update, I kind of maybe go through a little bit more um, time this week was a little bit rough, but I did want to try to get this video out um, as quickly as possible this evening. But that is going to be our nights that come with the game. Now, there's a Simon game again, so you're going to probably have, I would assume, quite a few nights in the stretch goal so you will have a little bit more variety um if you're going to be back in this campaign than if you waited for um retail and i would guess i'm not going to fully you know whatever i have no affiliation with anything but i'm going to guess that if they come out with any expansion content you will probably have some nights and stuff like that in those boxes as well so we also have a listing of monsters we have the Bavanche, she, Bavanche, which I'm assuming you're just banshees. 
Uh, we have Lord Fog with their uh, miniature and their monster card. We have the Nightmare, which is a fiery demon horse. And we have the Clericun, Clericun um, as well there, which looks like it is looks like a like a sports team mascot with a giant head. Um, then we've got the world here, Britannia board in the back here, looking like uh, Great Britain, and then the lost lands over here with what looks like some kind of a volcano in the middle. Um, so yeah, no idea what that's about. Uh, lost land tiles, which they are in a interesting shape, and they probably go in those uh, one, two, three spots on the lost lands board. Uh, we've got the Chaos Marker and the Chaos Dial. We've got nine region cards, 11 Chaos cards, nine Fate cards, and eight Battlefield tokens. And then we're going to have, after that, the Stretch Goals, which will go into that through their actual individual um, updates. So at the moment, there are, I think, 10 updates to um, the game that we will take a look at. But that right there is basically everything that comes with your base game so you're gonna have four different factions with quite a few different um uh figures in there with that four 13 figures each so that comes out to math is hard for uh four times 13 so it's gonna be 52 yeah that's playing cards um, that comes out to 52 different figures there with the, the three for the leader. So 52, 55, um, and then four knights and four um, of the other thing, monsters. So we're going to have 55, 59, 63 different miniatures coming with the base game of this game right here, which is quite a quite a lot i mean uh it's gonna be a lot more than a marvel united nah, maybe not as much as a zombicide but um a lot of mini a lot of cool minis none the less so let's go ahead and take a look at our first updates for the game starting with we're funded let chaos reign this is going to be the first update so our campaign to conquer britannia and bring peace to the lands has just begun and we're ecstatic to see that it has reached our funding goal thank you for all thank you all for joining us on this quest for the amazing support i was somewhat keeping track of this i was at work at the time uh, when this launched but i know it took them about a little over an hour to get everything funded originally it was a little bit slow um not, i mean not too slow i mean i've, I've there are plenty of games that take a lot longer but um for some of the recent Simon games that i've seen it it just took a while so uh it was like i said over an hour but they introduced their first monster which yeah they were waiting to unlock it so it is a red cap natterjack um these are little creatures and we'll see a couple of them actually um spoilers but uh these are little creatures that look like little garden gnomes but also are goblins or something like that um but it is riding on a toad which i'm pretty sure when i was doing some little research on this the natterjack is what came up with the toad um so it is a uh the natterjack is fabled for his powers for mischief and for sowing chaos among mortals do not listen to a single word that he utters for he can put a mortal into a trance and bind them to his will as he marches across britannia his is posse it continues to grow the red cap natterjack uses powerful <laughs> magics to allow anyone who so wishes to teleport into his territory every time he moves or the red cap natterjack uses powerful magics to allow anyone who so wishes to teleport into his territory every time he moves into it allows them to teleport uh furthermore he allows players to move into adjacent territories without having to consume any time so there is his figure farewell Camelot awaits. That is the new saying right here for what we're doing. Hey, there's the mouse again. Uh, that is the new. Um, oh, it's because I was on another tab. Um, that is the new uh, saying for this campaign. 
right there. So that is update number one. Again, the first update was for 105K right there. Update number two, it's dangerous to be alone. So they got the red cap, that first red cap done pretty quickly. And for the next one, it is a grindy low. Um, this is a, this is a creature right here. Yeah, this is a pretty nasty uh, creature coming from uh, bogs and wetlands and whatnot. The Grandilo is not as formidable as the other magical creatures you would find in Britannia. Uh, what they lack in brute force, they make up for in cunning and guile. They lurk about the wetlands of Britannia. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Always on the hunt for lonely travelers. Easy pickings even for the grindy low. The grindy low moves swiftly, but unfortunately for you, he is not, uh, but fortunately for you, he is not the most subtle when it comes to his movements. His movements alert the closest warriors, allowing players to move them from an adjacent territory into his. Any left, any unit left alone in the same territory as him would end up his next victim. So that is going to be his little goblin-y looking, um, figure so that is update number two and we will go for update number three next mordred's stronghold so remember i talked about those tokens earlier the care token kyer tokens basically it's a fancy word for saying stronghold but uh the next update at 115k is going to be stronghold pieces for mordred um basically it's gonna be 3d sculpts rather than just the tokens, which I can't really fully tell from the tokens. I'm assuming the tokens are just from a punch board. So they're just gonna be little cardboard tokens. Um, they almost to me look like they were going to be, uh, like clay tokens, which I would actually, I don't know if I would prefer that or not, but, um, it's Simon's any excuse they have to make a stronghold tower piece is, you know, okay with me, I guess. So that was going to be the next stretch goal. So number three update is the eternal hunt um the eternal hunt so let's see that was this is update number four and we are now on stretch goal number four so the wild uh the uh, the eternal hunt is going to introduce the white heart a white stag into um the game uh so if they reach 120k they will unlock this monster for all backers, including its figure and monster card. Uh, the White Heart is no ordinary stag, as it appears to have the uh, perennial ability to evade capture. Its capture has always been a feat that many knights hope to achieve, but none have ever succeeded. Legends tell of the wondrous blessings it would bestow upon you should you successfully capture it. However, till this very day, no one has been able to ascertain these legends were true or not, if these legends were true or not. The white stag move. The white stag always moves into territories without a chief, constantly uh, eluding their grasp. However, should you be skilled enough to end your turn with your chief in the same territory as the white heart, you would be able to retrieve all your action discs to perform more actions. So, there is a little bit of that right there. There is his figure and the other side of it and sculpted by big child creatives and then we go on to update number five merlin's domain so we immediately go from um care to monster and back over to the cares again don't know if i'm saying that right uh after this video i probably won't be saying it again at all anyway so um but we have the next stretch goal which is going to be two plastic cares for merlin's uh faction or Merlin's uh, stuff here to replace the two tokens that he has. Um, yeah, it even says right here, punch board tokens is what it's replacing. So um, anyway, the, they serve a magical, uh, they serve an important function in the game. They are magical conduits portals that lead your army from Britannia into the world of the face. Uh, sketches conceptualized by Adam Smith were realized Merlin's care sketch into a fully rendered 3D sculpt which you can use in your games of Mordred. So there is the blue tree the right there, and he's gonna have two of those. So let's go on to our next update, update number six over halfway there. Where are we at right now? 27 minutes of recording time. 
Um, gather round, uh, gather round, fellow knights, gather round for the magnificent woods that Merlin calls his domain are here. So we got that. And then we are going to have our first knight. So we're going to have Sir Frederick Stern unlocked at 135k right there. No one knows why Frederick Stern harbors such hatred for all things mystical, but his trepidations against it proved to be useful in combat. So basically this character, I was actually going through and reading it. Um, every time you cast a spell, he gains the ability to move to an adjacent territory. His exceptional mobility makes him invaluable asset to strategic battlefield movements, allowing him to move without performing a march. And I think, um, let's see, I think when he, let's see, nobody knows. He surges forward towards anyone that dares to wield it in combat as if he has a personal vendetta against them. It will not be long before it puts aside. Okay. So basically it looks like he moves anytime someone uses magic. Someone uses magic to him, he moves. You use magic, you can move him. So he's basically just trying to get away from magical sources. So it's kind of interesting mechanic right there. And there we have a painted version of this figure right away. It'll probably be featured in an update later on where they do some kind of, uh, you know, we're showing off the painted stuff here. So that is update number six going on to update number seven, Morgana's tower. Um, it's it, again, I'm passingly familiar with a lot of, uh, King Arthur, um, lore and stuff like that. However, I'm just, I, I'm assuming Morgana is Morgan Le Fay. And again, if I'm wrong about that, please somebody let me know in the comments. So I don't look like a total idiot. Um, but I basically was, in my research before doing this, uh, cause I do spend some time. That's why I film these so late is because I, by the time I get home from work, get kids to bed, get everything settled, and then try to do some research into what some of these things are. Uh, if not fully familiar with them. Uh, it gets to be late. So I'm assuming Morgana is also Morgan Le Fay. Um, and I know King Arthur stuff goes all over the place, but, uh, let me know about that in the comments. So, uh, her cares, are at the 140k mark so and it goes back into what i just read and she has her little red uh strongholds right there so that is going to be her update and we go now to get whisked away before you know it here on the next update here number eight um let's see behold morgana's towers they got those and then we're going to get another red cap key keeper this time at 155k. Uh, it's another basically casting illusions. Uh, the red cat key keeper wields extremely potent magics that could instantly move strongholds across Britannia with great ease. So basically, now that we have all of our 3D stronghold figures, we now have a monster that is going to move them about the board to possibly, especially if they're going to be used as portals to the um the other map i'm assuming they you know this character now being able to move them is going to cause some problems with that whenever the red cat keeper removes he also moves a cart care into another location anywhere on the same island the red cat key keeper himself is a locus of powerful teleportation magic and as such players brave enough can use it to their advantage and use him as if he is a care stronghold Teleporting to his location should the opportunity arise. So there's that. There is his figure right there. And now we move on to update number nine. I need a hero now. This was kind of a weird update when I saw it earlier today. Um, but we're going to go into it right now. So they unlocked the red cap key keeper at 155k. And at 170k, we've got Esclabar, um, which is says such a knight is sir esclabar the unknown so this is technically a knight but it's showing here that he is um a hero figure so he's not a knight he's a hero now so far i believe knights are all riding on horses this is a basically a different kind of sculpt he's not riding a horse on here uh escobar thins out the ranks of his foes even before they could even engage in combat with him it is through sheer luck or by some, um, is it by sheer luck or by some devious plot that his foes fall one by one? Nobody will truly ever know, 
but it is ultimately a very useful talent that he possesses at the start of a war, which is a phase in the game. Uh, Escobar can kill one warrior in any adjacent in any, yeah in any adjacent territory, crippling your opponent's forces off the bat. A hero, you might ask, a hero indeed. So let us learn what are heroes in the game. So this is going through the hero mechanics, and as such, there's also the hero bases, which are probably be the smaller bases. I'm assuming the knight ones are a little bit bigger. But uh, with the addition of Escobar, we add a new mechanic to Mordred heroes. As the first of many, these remarkable individuals for higher add strategic depth, transforming the way you experience the game. Incorporating heroes in the game is simple. Shuffle the hero cards you have available into a deck and draw heroes equal to the number of players. To hire a hero, all you need to do is muster, which is a, again, mechanic in the game, uh, your forces and choose a face-up hero instead of selecting a regular unit from your reserve. Attach a color base and place them in a territory just like any other unit. Retrieve their hero card, for they now belong to you. As each faction can only have one hero in their service at a given time, choose your hero wisely. Should your valiant hero meet an untimely demise, their figure and card are removed from the game. Now, I found this interesting because you're we're only on day one. I would think that they would come up with some more knights first. Uh... Because again, I'm, and I'm building my spreadsheet over here. Um, we've got one, two, three, four. Uh, spoiler: We're gonna have five monsters by the end of uh, going into day two. Five monsters announced going into uh, day two, um, and we're gonna only have one knight, which is uh, Frederick Stern, and we're gonna have uh, Escalabar, which is a hero. I find it funny that they're introducing a whole mechanic into the game through a stretch goal and not introducing it through a expansion. Like, add an expansion, here's the hero figures, and then after that, we're going to have stretch goals that relate to this. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, of, I apologize for making this comparison, um, but I would kind of think it would be more like... Um, behind me and I don't want to turn around uh undead or alive uh zombicide undead or alive with the um uh what whatever the class that that came in the gears of guns uh the steampunk uh class and I, I'm not gonna be able to remember what it is what it's called um uh but that class basically during that campaign they had regular stretch goals and then they had because all the stretch goals for that game were playable characters it, it, it seems um but then they would also have stretch goals that were for specifically the gears and guns expansion and it was that um engineer whatever that class was i don't know why i can't think of it right now uh, but it's whatever that class was i feel like they should have kind of waited for that uh but we'll see how it goes in the campaign um i i they were day one so I can't sit here and say you know what i should or shouldn't have done because i have no idea what all the content is um, you know, I'll, I'll wait till we're done with the whole thing before I'd be judgmental I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, no, I just thought it was an odd choice to basically create a whole new mechanic for the game on day one. We don't, we don't even know fully. We got the rule book up here and there hasn't been a gameplay out yet. Um, that is coming not from here, but that is apparently coming. I was looking at some comments, but, uh, there, uh, yeah, I just, I found that, I found that really odd. Anyway, so we're going to go on to our next update here. Update number 10, Trespass at Your Own Peril. So Escobar was unlocked at 170k, as well as the hero color bases. And seeing as how there's four of them, I'm assuming that there's going to be more heroes throughout the uh, campaign. But now we're going to have a Trog or a Troglodyte uh, come out here. It looks very similar-ish to the Grindylo, although this one's a lot more skinnier. Um, and apparently has the dolls of children uh, tied to its hair. So there is that. Um, it is best to leave this reclusive beast to himself. It does call it a troglodyte up here. Uh, but should you be unfortunate enough to step into its home, there is a hefty price to pay for trespassing in its home. The trog will do everything in its power to disrupt plans for your grand campaign to chase you out of its home and you would be a fool to underestimate what it is capable of. Trog will cost you favor 
if it ever comes into your chief's territory. And if that were not warning enough, lingering any longer will send your chief into a battle frenzy, allowing your faction to only earn favor through war. Sheer, clear, steer clear of the trog. So there's that. Always good advice. Um, and there is the trog's figure. And that is it for all the updates. We're going to go back to the main page first and refresh it and make sure I am not lying. Yeah, there was 190. 190 was the, yeah, 190 was the mark. Uh, they are currently, as I'm at 12.07 a.m. here, we are 3,000 off. Now, with that said, I am probably not going to be posting this until way after day two is over um, or going on. So uh, one of two things is going to happen. Either I'm going to end the video right now and go to bed because I have to be at work early in the morning. I don't even have time to edit this with how late I got started tonight. Um, and you'll see this. Uh, uh, you'll see this. Hope. Hopefully, to, uh, Thursday afternoon. If not, it'll be late Thursday night when you see this. Day one coverage one, which, you know, day one ends at 3 o'clock. But, um, yeah, going over this first day of the stuff, and then we'll continue. Hopefully, we'll continue uh, Friday at a more reasonable time. Um, but one of the things is going to happen either I'm going to uh, end this video now and say goodnight, or uh, it's going to cut off right here and... Uh, uh, I will instantly be changing clothes and covering just day two. Well, I'll just go ahead and do it. Uh, the recording on this is 40 minutes so far. So, I mean, not like I've never done an hour long video of these before. Anyway, so the almost changed over. Um, so um, that is all the updates for uh, Mordred day one. Um, 12 a, yeah, it's 12 a.m. right now. So uh, day one technically ends at 3 p.m on the 13th but uh we're you know we're doing basically going into the first night so uh i'm gonna quit rambling i really am uh, so that is everything there if you have any uh wanting to tell me that i'm uh, pronouncing things wrong or if some of the things that i um am not sure about you want to clarify for me please leave a comment down below with that information um, if you are enjoying this and you would like to see us do more, us, I mean me, do more videos in this series covering this game, um, for updates, uh, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. So, you know, when videos are coming out and if there are other games, uh, stuff like that with this kind of coverage that you would like to see us do here. Please absolutely let me know uh, what we're going to do. I'd like to do other games and other Kickstarter campaigns, possibly not outside of, or possibly outside of um, CMON games. Again, just the way they're kind of uh, structured, it's just a little easier to kind of do like these kind of series on those. Other games would be like kind of a one off almost, but um, I'm open for anything at this point. So. With that said, you guys have a wonderful night. I'm going to go get some sleep, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.